My Michelle Live. It's the My Michelle Live podcast. My, 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 my Michelle Live. My Michelle Live. Sports time out. The fans, the field, the faith, the fun. Here's Michelle. Big voice guy, big voice guy. It's not just the fans, faith, and field. It's the friends, too, man. It is the friends. I got my brothers here surrounding me as we talk sports today. You're listening to the My Michelle Live podcast today, Sports Time Out. And I'm going to introduce you to our roundtable of fellas, Garrick Payne. He is pastor. He is a coach. He is chaplain and all around cool guy broadcasting today from Milan, Italy. Hello, my friend. I'm actually outside of Naples. Oh, you're outside of (laughs) Naples. My bad. Where the the food is good. And he, he yeah, was able to drag himself away from the table because <laughs> that's all we've been seeing. We haven't seen any shots of on his Facebook page of how beautiful it is. I mean, a few here and there. It's mostly food. So it man is. after my own heart. We that's have, the true beauty of, of Italy. Is <laughs> <laughs> we have our own sports encyclopedia guy, Rich Hallstrom. Yes. The Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Rich joins us as well. He is the 12th man in the Seattle area and a veteran sports reporter. Author of the new, absolutely off the charts, cool sci fi book, Breaking Yesterday. He's a sports reporter and photographer as well, and a really good friend of everyone who knows him, Brent. Baker, and you can find him at brentbaker.com where you can order your book, Breaking Yesterday. I got to tell you. It's not a pirate book. I just got to make sure we. (laughs) (laughs) There are are no pirates. Sorry. (laughs) Maybe maybe in the sequel. Can I put my request in? And then we have the Wookiee of the year. He's our sports authority. You'll hear him from time to time as our man on the street, the one and only Joshua McMillan. (laughs) (laughs) And the man who you can understand that he is a villain who is always chilling, but he's also the coolest guy you'd ever want to know. He is he is a guy who knows sports, has been a producer, and is a great guy to have around. Yes, he always has. Most of us have this Seattle sports-based mindset, but because he's part of our diversity division. And no, it's not the color of his skin. <laughs> it's his sport. <laughs> It's the sports he talks about. Uh, Truly, guys, I think we have, and I'm Michelle Mendoza. Um, (laughs) Truly, I think we do have the most diverse uh, talking table in sports, period. We run the gamut of uh, of ethnicities, abilities, uh, even species. Uh, Hello, Wookiee. Language. (laughs) (laughs) but we take it on Uh, so whatever language you do speak there has been a pretty big story that's come out of Seattle. I'm sorry that uh, Coach E couldn't join us today because Sunday night he was like, are you getting this? Kevin Mathers, are you getting this? He's giving me a play-by-play. I messaged all of you. Seattle Mariners is now song and dancing in damage control after Kevin Mathers, he's part owner, CEO, uh, had some pretty (laughs) inflammatory things to say, Rich Hallstrom. Pretty, pretty inflammatory. Okay. They were outright. Oh, my gosh. Was there anyone he didn't offend? Anyone? Anyone? He he insulted Julio Rodriguez. He insulted Asashi Iwakuma, one of several Mariner players who had. Who suddenly speaks much better English. Pitched a no, pitched a no hitter. Don't ever, don't anybody forget that. Sashi Iwakuma may not speak very good English, but he did pitch one of your team's no hitters in team history, along with uh, several other people, which we won't go into at this time. But Kevin Mather made an, made a complete fool of himself for forty five minutes, <laughs> and basically embarrassed the entire. Mariner organization talking about how certain players are treated 
how certain mm -hmm. players suddenly became better English speakers once they're translate, once they were told they were not going to pay for their translator salary uh, once again. Uh, but Josh, this has got to be one of the biggest uh, foul ups in Major League Baseball history. Yeah, he managed to surpass Larry Scott as my least favorite executive in sports. Like that's, wow. <laughs> it's, it's hard well, to do, but he managed think, to do it. Yeah, I think the real travesty of this is that the Mariners let Kevin Mather resign. John Stanton needed to be a real leader and fire Kevin, Kevin Mather about five minutes after learning about this video and watching it. There is no reason Kevin Mather should have been allowed to resign. Those are fireable offenses. Those are fireable offenses. And I would not blame one Mariner fan out there for never buying another Mariner ticket. Rich, Ooh, are you yeah. saying he should get a promotion? Is that what you're... <laughs> <laughs> No, maybe he's, maybe he's, to, to couch CEO. Maybe he's, a, he's available to take over the Pac-12 operations now. So. Foot in go. mouth. Foot in uh, mouth. No, he he made he made Larry Scott look intelligent. He did. He did. And here's the thing too: is he he was this talking out of the wrong Scott side of the food tube for a lot of this because he's he's head of the business portion, right? He doesn't have all of the negotiation on the on the actual baseball game side of things. And we heard Jerry DePoto say this week that the baseball operations are separate. The baseball operations, they have autonomy. Clearly, and yes, clearly. So he's talking out of the wrong side of the food tube. He doesn't, he, these are his opinions on the matter. This isn't the, how the organization for baseball feels about it. Okay, but so. But the thing is, the thing is, Josh, we, this is an inside look in how decisions are made. So I would say this is a direct correlation to why the Mariners have not made the have not made the playoffs for 19 years because of your business your business administration office does not respect its employees your employees are not going to do their best job yeah and, and for, that's why go ahead know, Josh and that that's like one of the things I tweeted about this is this is ridiculous and he needs to go and this isn't cancel culture. There's a difference between that's what, what this I is wanted and to get to. Culture. Very different. And and it's, why this, is that? It's not cancel culture because he has effectively like any CEO, any business, if you go out and you alienate your talent pool, if you alienate your partners, if you, you alienate everyone involved, like you've crippled your business's ability to do business and not because of some like culture that we offended. I mean, he said things that were definitely racially insensitive at the very least, but that's not even the main reason he has to go. I mean, there's business reasons when you go out and you're trying to air out what your perception of contract negotiations are with with your players that's ridiculous you know and what player is going to want to come and sign with that i think even the, oh sorry well it, it undercuts the culture that scott service and jerry depota has been working very hard and doing a great job of creating in the mariners clubhouse and with the affiliate clubhouses in tacoma and everett and arkansas they've done a great job with that and this completely undercuts that unfortunately we've had a couple players come out and say that no they wanted to be here james paxton said what James Mathis said was just wrong. He had other contracts that were more lucrative that had multi years, but he wanted to come to Seattle because this is where he felt he wanted to be because he likes it here. You know, and we had other players like Marco Gonzalez says it's disappointing. It's awful, but it's going to take more to tear this clubhouse down. So I'm really proud of that and the culture that Scott and Jerry have made. And hopefully that can be the new norm as we get rid of Mather and maybe bring in, <clears throat> Someone like Theo Epstein, someone that actually likes baseball and wants to win. <laughs> hey, Josh, I think Josh, I think they should hire you and me. There we go. <laughs> that will do it. That's my thing. You, if the Mariners want to improve their image, hire us for diversity's sake. Amen. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let's yeah. just all I, volunteer. I, I, yeah, I'm thinking. Actually, I mean, it, it's terrible for the Mariners. Don't get me wrong, and I do think. <laughs> You know, this this could create, like Marco Gonzalez said, the common enemy dynamic within the clubhouse. It could bring the clubhouse together. That's assuming that everything we've been hearing about the Scott service culture is true, because as we find out, sometimes behind the scenes, things are different than what have we've perceived. But I think the bigger issue is, and probably ultimately the reason he got was allowed to resign is the effect that this can have on the collective bargaining negotiations that are 
looming and ever larger because Mm -hmm. the players have been complaining rightfully so about service time manipulation and all that kind of thing but it's always been what they've seen behind the scenes going on in their personal contract negotiations and here you have a team president laying out all of their suspicions publicly for everyone to see and so i think that when you you head into the negotiations um it was just like dropping a nuclear bomb on top of it well brent the question the question i have is why is this an appropriate set of topics to be discussed to a rotary club Oh, totally. Why None would you talk to the <laughs> you're talking to the people you want to buy your tickets? It's the <laughs> Bellevue Washington Rotary Club. By the way, it was taken down from the Rotary Club website his his meeting. We got a copy of probably 90% of what he was saying and it is on our website if you go to mymichellelive.com and uh, go specifically to our sports timeout podcast page you'll be able to watch it in pretty much uh, pretty much every offensive thing it may may have left out a few offensive things doesn't really matter the damage was done and i think this is one of the reasons why i do have a problem with the cancel culture i mean this thing became a national story in zero time flat but my problem with it is that with the cancel culture culture, uh, it almost gets lost in the cacophony. You know, so many people cry wolf over everything. Good point. When it really counts, do we really even hear it, Chris? Yeah, I know. I wish that uh, I wish that it would be much more clear. Um, and I'm learning about the situation. You know, you guys are educating me about it because I wasn't privy to it. But I must say um, the cancel culture is is really out of hand now. And it's got me, um, Josh, it's got me doing things like um, canceling my own uh, uh, fandom of the, the Mandalorian. I, I no longer can I watch know. the show. And I, I know. I, know I, can't, I can't do that. Now, trust, I'm going to watch Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett. I'm going to watch that. But... <laughs> well, well, fortunately, we know your Disney Plus subscription is good because you're hanging out in Westview right now with uh, the Scarlet Witch, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, hey, there's more to tell. Touché. There's more to tell on that Touché. one. I'll tell. I'll tell exactly what's going on with that. List. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. So, do you think this is the whole Mathers issue? I mean, is it a matter of just Mathers, or is there more to the matter for well, Major League Baseball? But look at it this way: if you're the CEO of Dell. And you go out and be like, yeah, we were talking with Intel and we really like, yeah, we made a deal, but we we felt that they couldn't get a better deal elsewhere. And, you know, you're alienating a key business partner. And that's what he's doing by airing out the contract negotiations of players and saying, yeah, well, we didn't think they'd get it. We didn't think that uh, James Paxson would get a better deal. We didn't think that Taiwan Walker was worth three years. He signed for three years, by the way, you know, you're airing out like, ah, well, we said we'd let him come up to the majors if he uh, signed that six year deal. He's alienating the key business partners because players are they're They're the talent, but they're also the key business partners. You do not have baseball. Baseball doesn't exist without the players, much like Dell can't exist without the processors or the, or the, um, the graphics cards or the screens, you know, like it's. It, it exists off of that product, the product they create, and he's alienated all of that, and he's threatened the status quo for for the entire league. You know, this is and the the players' association even put out a tweet talking about that. He's alienated this. It's going to cause some problems, and yeah, it's going to cause some drinks. I think too. He, no, no, no. He was he wasn't just alienating. He must have been like throwing something. Back. <laughs> something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it makes Kevin, you wonder. Ma- to go Kevin, on for 45 minutes like that. that I mean, it's not like why this didn't is like a stray one line comment. Though. Come like on. Why re- didn't someone read. say, you know, Kevin, thank you very much. Yeah. That was really interesting. <laughs> Let's shut you the heck up now. Who are you? Kevin, Kevin Mather. Rotary. Kevin Mather, Bellevue. Kevin, what the yeah. heck? Kevin <laughs> Mather is an ex- service time. Kevin Mather is an example of why I've always said that Major League Baseball is not the national pastime because Ooh. it is run by fools that don't know how to promote wow. their product. Okay, so let's I move Larry to... Larry Scott is looking for a position. What's more American <laughs> than that? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> let's look to what might be the new... Um, 
pastime, and that's the NFL. I know the NFL, there's trades, tirades, negotiations. The Players Association, um, the NFL Players Association has agreed to a minimum salary cap for 2021 of, I believe, $180 million. That's down a few, you know, quite a few millions. So that's going to have an effect as players are trying to negotiate. We have the effect of COVID and and fans in the stands and such. Also, CBS Sports reported that if you have not begun to fully contemplate the Texans without Deshaun Watson, the Seahawks without Russell Wilson, the Packers without Aaron Johnson, they said you better get started. They literally said this. At least one of them won't be back in 2021 and all could be gone by 2020. Two things are really is, is, heating is, up. Is out Aaron Rodgers changing his name to Johnson a stealth quarterback move? It's not going to happen. <laughs> well, he's alienating well, himself from his family. So right there, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And even some people are talking about a Wilson Watson just exchange. I mean, things are getting crazy not out there. Happen. Not it's gonna not going to happen. We're not going to see any kind of trade with Russell uh, Wilson. Let's just shut no. that okay. down right now. KJ no, Wright agrees ball. with oh, you. On. I don't want to shut that down. So well, well, okay. tell me when it's my turn. Go okay. For it. Well, l- let me just say really quick. It's not going to happen because the Seahawks, if they trade him, would have $38 million in dead dead cap space. That alone is going to prevent them from doing it. They're going to have over 20% in one player in dead cap space if they trade Russell Wilson. It's not gonna happen they can't afford to do it yeah so chris brown i think it i think this is this is a villain moment and this is why i'm reporting to you live outside of west new jersey (laughs) because y'all are going to need some chaos magic to make that (laughs) not happen all right i got my uh I got my infinity glove but even this even this is not gonna stop that from happening uh and you know I, i i think i got the time one on there we can turn it back to some of the greater <laughs> years, but going forward, uh, look, when I saw the report come out from the Seahawks, the Seahawks saying, we're, we're not interested in trading uh, Russell Wilson. They, they, you know, that kind of randomly came out, right. A couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, what was there? Oh yes. They said that the Texans had inquired about it or something like that. And we're not interested in trading. I said, I said that if I'd been on the show, I'd have said, it, and I said to friends, we have not heard the last of that. That is really interesting. We haven't heard the last of that. And lo and behold, yesterday, Wilson comes out with the four places that he could go. Why would you do that if there is no possibility of you being traded? Well, because his, you're, get, because you're those, getting bad one advice. Of those, hold on, hold on, Rich. One of those is Mark Dallas. Rogers. Dallas, Texas. I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Seattle. I'm in full villain mode right now. I believe number three right? is going to be wearing a star on his helmet. I and he's also going to be playing for the Texans. Oh, oh, Rangers. I just threw up a little Rangers. bit in my Dallas mouth, Cowboys. people. I just threw oh, up okay. in my okay. mouth. Dang. I need, I need, <laughs> I need, to, ch- I need to chime in, on, chime in on that. Jerry Jones doesn't even know what a Super Bowl looks like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. What does that have Russ- to do with anything? Last time he was not, there, they rode dinosaurs. It, it doesn't matter. Boys, KJ about, Wright about disagrees that. with Chris Brown. Here's what KJ said. It was just this morning. Um, he was, uh, let's see, what was it? Good morning football. Good morning football is where he was. Uh, this is what he had to say. Yeah, you know, I was, I was kind of caught off guard myself. But, you know, looking back at it, Russ isn't going anywhere. As long as I'm, as long as I'll be in Seattle, Russ is gonna be the quarterback, and um, he means too much to us. He means way too much to this organization. He means way too much to this city, and um, usually people want to come to Seattle, not leave Seattle. And so um, I'm sure that him and the organization to get things figured out. He's somebody that you know I admire and and love playing with, and so I expect Russ to be a Seahawks for a very long time. Richard Sherman, yeah, you know, I was, was kind of caught off guard yeah. myself, <laughs> but you, you know, looking back there at it, there you go, guys. And, so... and Richard Sher- and Richard Sherman doesn't have another Super Bowl ring, so uh, there we go. Neither does Seattle. I mean, I'm sorry, I had to throw that. I mean, come on, man, come on, give me some facts. Hey, give Richard me- Sherman might be I'll back give, in Seattle. I'll get. I will give you some facts. Two of the four, two of the four teams that Russell says he <laughs> wants to go to, 
got no chance can't of afford it nope. to a Super Bowl. Got no got no chance. And if the New Orleans Saints want to do a trade for Russell Wilson, I'll take Elvin Kamara and three first round draft choices. Okay. But the Saints are also something like 80 million over the cap. So that's not even in a realm of possibility for them. Excellent point. Like, we can talk about these trades. Whose job it is to work those cap numbers. And I've seen them do the impossible. And again, why would you come out with a list of four possible trade does? I. Oh, I got an answer to that. Is that. He's not getting oh, I got an answer. along with C. I, yeah, I got an answer I to that. An answer because it's all yeah. about negotiations. Neither one of them, them, one of them, them want to say that they want to do the trade. Oh, we're not doing it. Russell's like, got, oh, we're not doing it. I got an an- I got an answer for you. Mark Rogers negotiates like a baseball agent. This is how baseball agents negotiate, period. And, and he, that's what and that's yeah, he don't say that, hands until and, Russell says no, he says hands. And that's he no, 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 no. No, baseball. No, these are how baseball agents do their thing. Baseball agents don't give a darn what their client thinks. All right, they yeah, do what guys, they want to do it, for them. Comments, comment coming in no from our live target. listeners. Uh, comment coming Ooh. in from our live listeners is that um, KJ himself, who I was just playing the soundbite of, uh, you know, there's some possibility he may not be staying in Seattle for more money. So how much of this is hyperbole and, and positioning to try to make the most out of what you're getting and to try to make yourself, oh, you know, I'm going to yeah, leave. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going to give you more money. How much of it? of it is is positioning and how much of it is reality josh kj kj is not if he leaves seattle it's not because he doesn't want to be here he said every step of the way he would prefer to stay in seattle he likes seattle that said he's saying he's not taking a hometown discount and you know good for him he's made middle of the pack money for years and not because the seahawks have paid him decently it's not like they've underpaid him but he's been playing really he put two of the best years together he ever has the last two years he's towards the end of the career been in the nfl for 10 years the longest tenured player on the seahawks he wants to make sure he has his money for when his career is done so if he leaves it's going to be for more money not because he doesn't like the seahawks or doesn't want to be here and i would i'd bet dollars to donuts that if someone offered kj you know a big contract he's going to give the seahawks a chance to match it if they can i'm sure they would I, I know that the Seahawks have their price. It's a business, but I know he's going to give them a chance to match. Cause I know I've, I've been watching him on Twitter all the time. People are like, well, bye KJ. He's like, hold on now. There's still a chance to work this thing. We can still figure this out. He's been saying that all along the way. He's not trying to leave Seattle and he's right. Most people want to come to Seattle. We've become a destination for people to come because we have a winning culture. <clears throat> and yes, there's drama with Russell Wilson. I agree. Mark Rogers is a huge part of this, but aside from the emotions and what, what is true or not and what people are saying, just the, the numbers of what the NFL is, what the cap space is, what the cap hits are. There's just not a lot of people that can one afford a trade for Russell Wilson. The Seahawks can't afford it. It's like, it's not something that's going to happen. And look at where, like where Pete is, he signed a five-year extension And this is going to kill them for the next two years in cap space. So that means that the Seahawks are going from a 12 win division winning team, Super Bowl contender to a rebuild team. So for the next couple of years, no one, no one in the history of the NFL has had over 20% of their cap be dead cap and even make the playoffs. And the Seahawks Seahawks won't either. The Seahawks won't either, but I still say all this turbulence is not for no reason. What you got pastor? And for- I'm, raising, I'm raising my hand because I haven't spoken yet. I thought it was the, the time delay. It was the, you know, you're in a different time zone. It's going to take right, a while right, for you to right. catch I'm up. A, What's going on? I'm in a nine hour delay, but I'm, I'm with Josh and Michelle. Russell William is, Wilson is not going anywhere. He, he is, he is here. He's here to stay for a lot of reasons, including the salary cap in, including the fact that I think his agent is just playing what they do. And, and I think, this whole culture of what's been going on in, in the league this year. Wait, I think Pastor, you're saying that his his agent wants him to get more money and that's all this is all you said that's what Russell Wilson's doing. He just wants more money? No, 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 it's not that, but it's it's part of the game, right? It, it's part of the theatrics that, that is played, in my opinion. I mean it, it's just because then when when Russell is safe and secure here, then everyone's like 
oh, we're so thankful, you know, we, you know, because if, <laughs> if, if he's just here and everybody is expecting that and it's no problem and he's safe, then, then there can be a tendency for people to just take him for granted. And I, I think this is a part of that whole mentality of let's just, you know, let's whoop it up a little bit. And so that way when he stays and everybody's happy. Russell think, Wilson I, I, just had an input in hiring the new offensive coordinator, Shane, Shane Waldron. He's not yep. going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm thinking this is more, more of a play for power than money. Mm -hmm. And, and, okay, and so, so and how, that, how does that work, though, guys, on the bigger front, Brent? Um, not just Seattle, but everywhere. Let's let's appeal to well, everyone. I do, I, I do think today. I do think that the NFL players have seen what's happened in the NBA with a lot more player empowerment, and you have some of the the bigger names in the NFL, main, namely quarterbacks, starting to assert their will more on their franchises. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson yeah. being another prime example of that. So, I. I I, I wonder if some of this has started to start a little bit out of his control, control, but, uh -huh. um, but at the same time, I think the whole, the result of him participating and by all accounts, approving of the hire of the new offensive coordinator. I think that was, that was a chess piece, if you will, moved that, that was part of what R Russell Wilson is wanting here. If he gets traded, if he manipulates a trade, he's not going to have that kind of power, in a new franchise. Oh, but if they're trading for him, he will have that kind of power. If they're if they're going out, I guess I, I guess if you I guess if Houston to trade for him, then he's going to have power because he's bringing that star power to town. When he goes do, to Dallas, do you, do you think that Dallas, do you think that Jerry playing, Jones would see that kind of power with the Rangers? Oh no way, he's no way. <laughs> and and Sean Payton isn't going to give up that kind of power in New Orleans either. So maybe yeah, maybe Drew Brees, you, know, you don't think Drew Brees okay. had any power there. You don't think Drew Brees had a say in what was going on? Drew Brees and Sean Payton got along, no problem. They did their thing. They did their thing. Sean Payton is an offensive coach, but he but when the bottom line comes down to the final decision, Sean Payton is the one that's making the final decision. Russell won't have a problem with that. That he shouldn't have a problem with that with Pete Carroll, but he does. <sighs> But he okay, does. guys. Like, he, he has he has a problem with somebody. <laughs> I, I, I think we're I think we're gonna move on now. I think we're gonna move on, and we're gonna see how this all plays it's, out. This has been it's fun. Much, it's much we'll ado about up nothing. Week, huh? I'm yeah. just saying. I remember, we'll, we'll I remember we're doing a song and dance. Come remember, opening day, Russell Wilson's gonna be tossing the ball. I remember a couple weeks before the I'm Cowboys. gonna go get I some tea. A couple weeks ago, <laughs> uh, we were we uh, there was there was a little poo poo on a team called the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I remember that I was right here saying, hey, watch out. They got a good okay. defense. Ah, oh, they're nothing. They're nothing. There's something now. Uh, well, you guys are talking. I'm just going to be. <laughs> okay, we'll see. We'll give that point to you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. All right. And we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game, game I, set I just need somebody's bus. help because y'all y'all see my car back there. I can't get to it. Every time I go in, it looks like something. I, I can't. If anybody has any suggestions. Call Russell Wilson. Oh, he'll throw you over there. And yeah, Can't. he'll gladly come over here and come out of town and take care. Of Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give he him got he got out of NC State for a reason. Yeah, but he hey. got out. Yeah, I, I would never go near NC State. I would That's never go right. near That's, NC State. Uh, Guys, I want to let you know that we are broadcasting live. You can find us on uh, My Michelle Live Facebook. You can go to MyMichelleLive.com. Your live comments will be seen. And we'll, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any comments, um, you can just put them in right there. And we will take it on. I want to move on to a different topic. And that has to do with the U.S. Women's National Team. They're playing in the She Believes Tournament, which, hey, they have, I mean, they are forced to be reckoned with. What the U.S. to the goal for press? Check this out. And this goal is quintessential USA under Brock Wendovnowski. It's that ball out to the wide area with Lindsay Horan pulling wide. And again, that channel created because of Horan's presence. So Chris oh, has beautiful, 
beautiful goal, just a beautiful goal. One of many goals that the U.S. scored. I mean, they're they're just a spectacular team, a spectacular team to watch. But there's more to the story of soccer. So we can talk about the U.S. women's national team and their play, uh, what it's going to look like for the Olympics. And here's something interesting. U.S. women's national team in their most recent game, everybody stood for the national anthem. They didn't kneel for the first time in I don't know how long. Uh, U.S. defender Crystal Dunn said that the players are past the protesting phase and moving into the let's just let's just do. So instead of all of the talk, let's put it into action. I guess that's what they're saying, Rich. Uh, well, that's <laughs> Chris Brown. Not, if, if you read, <laughs> if you. You read, if you read between <laughs> the lines, basically what she Basically, what Dunn is saying, we can't score any more brownie points for kneeling for the national anthem. So we actually really got to do something now. That's yeah, my, I, res- I can kind of respect it. that. I can well, respect that. It's not even brownie that. points. It's, it's, we got in the office who we want. So, okay, we're good. We're good. You know, I was going to save this for my final shot, but I have a soundbite from um, – Ibrahimovic, you know, he used to play for the for the LA Galaxy. He's um, yeah, he's a, a Swedish st- soccer star, and this is what he had to say about LeBron James, about some of this athlete, athlete activism. Take a listen to. In, in fact, let me just pull this up for our live audience and for those of you who are viewing later the video. I want you to see this and hear it as well because of the accent. It's you know a little easier to watch make sure michelle that you enable the sound the sound is enabled if you guys can't hear it um i don't i I, you let me know but you do i play football because i'm the best in playing football i don't do politics if i would be a political politician i would do politics that is the first mistake people do when they become famous and they come in a certain uh, status Stay out of it. Just do what you're best at. Because it's- so what he's basically saying is, you know what? Stay out of politics. Do what you're best at. If I was a, a politician, I would run for politics. I'm an athlete. That's why I'm the best at what I do. The guy has no end of ego. But in this case, I think Ibrahimovic has it right. Well, okay. I think he has it. He has it right halfway. LeBron James as a citizen like myself. Yeah. We both okay. have we both have a right to we both have a right to express our opinions. But I okay. will say that I believe athletes use their fame to push people yes as a uh motivation. And I agree with you Rich, but let me just stop you real quick. People. Because and that's, and that's it's, exactly let me stop it's, you for just a, a second and, and give you it, give give a little yeah. bit of insight and and maybe just add on to that real quick and let you guys respond. There's something about that he might not understand about the United States of America, and it's that we are a government of, by, and for we the people. So I agree with you, Rich. You've got it right. We are a government of, by, for we we the people. We are all in the government, so to speak. We can't forget that. However, are you on the field to be a politician? Are you on the field to play the game? Play the game. Bring people together. And the more people you bring together, the more likely you are. To have your message heard when you're off the field, Chris Brown. Yeah, totally agree. And I, I think that there is a platform, all right. And I think that there is a responsibility. And I remember, a lot of these guys point. and 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 women feel responsibility if they are from rundown neighborhoods. They feel responsibility yeah. to try to 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 give back. Do Cam it. Newton, I'd love to, I'd love to hit on that, you guys. But Cam Cam Newton, you know, he sponsors the kids in that. Uh, um, the, the camp and everything. But I think you got to have the right platform and what you say needs to build people up. You need to be edifying and building Excellent up point. what you say, not wearing socks that cause, you know, uh, 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 people Police who work offers in certain pigs. Place. pigs. Yeah. 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 You're, you're uh, absolutely I, right. I come back to the drum that I beat all the time. It's that I'm, I'm okay with activism in sports, but I really struggle with the fact that it's, it, it's only selectively allowed. Okay. okay. If you're going to allow it, then you allow it. 
And if people are going to put slogans or if they're going to be allowed to put slogans on, then, then make it across the board. You can put slogans on. You can put your faith slogans on there. You can put free Hong Kong on there. You can put all the things that you want as well as exactly. the ones that that some may deem more politically correct in the moment. And that would be great. And, I just r- rather not see it. And then we talk about it afterwards. I would like a respite in the American way of life from freaking politics. And that's where sports was, what, the place that sports I'm, was I'm for me. There, it was this exactly. place where I don't care what you think, believe what you look like mm-hmm. or what you're going to be eating for dinner. Can we just watch the game? Can we just watch yeah. the game? Josh, well, you're just kind of sitting back and, and uh, chilling. What's up with you? What are you thinking? Well, I'm chilling with the villain, even though he's got that that whack background back there, where he, <laughs> he thinks that Russell Wilson's going to go play for the Cowboys and that we're dysfunctional going back organization. There. We're, we're going back there. IDK, I can't man. believe we're going back there. He's a savior. <laughs> I've lost uh, all I, control. I, Pray for me. <laughs> did you ever have it? No, not really. But at least I <laughs> felt like I did. No. Yeah, I'm I'm glad for this kind of move, though, where we're we're going away from the let's have the politics on the field and putting action to our words. Right. Like, can we do that more? Can we go and just go do? OK, you know, apparently not the word. Right. Apparently not, because the Equity Act has passed passed in the House again, I think unlikely to pass in the Senate. But even if it does, I don't think it has a shot in the Supreme Court because we have a fairly balanced Supreme Court. But that Equity Mm -hmm. Act uh, is what a mess. I I mean, really, it's it's uh, elevating those who have gender identity issues, regardless of their biological sex. It gives men in men bodies who identify as whatever uh, the chance to play women's sports and I have a problem with that and I'm going to ask you guys a question if you don't mind me making this the face-off question give me your thoughts on this and answer this question if you will how many of our wonderful awesome U.S. women's national team members would make a U.S. national team. If we just said, you know what, gen- that's gender bias, having a men's team and a woman's team. You know, what if you don't identify as either? Where's their team? Where do they play? So let's just make it all one, right? Because there really is no difference. So face off to me, how many U.S. women's national team players would actually make the U.S. national team? This week we've got a face off. And they're going to face off against one another. Rich Halstrom is giving me the finger. Well, just the, hey, I want, not the middle one, not the middle one, for those of you who are listening. I will will tell you this, and I will give a nod to North Carolina for this. And Chris knows I have a soft spot for North Carolina for this. There's only one female athlete that would make the U.S. men's national soccer team Mia Hamm. Mia Hamm. The only one that would make. The yeah, only I think one that that's would make. The concession. Forget, cons- forget it. Consensus. Everybody else. Consensus. Everybody else can be on the sidelines. I think the next thing that would come would be the quota. Uh, yeah. You would the, 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 all of a sudden you would find okay we're gonna have one team but you have to have X number <clears throat> of this gender and I don't know if they go with twenty five genders you might have to have one of each. See, this is where this topic <laughs> gets confusing. Are we gonna have? Are we going to have a disabled member of each team too? And would your quota be women who are biologically women or women who identify as women? <laughs> you know, it, it's it, a de- it's all a dead end. I mean, it it, it gets it, it turns into a big mess. I would love to see a U.S. co-ed <laughs> national team. Actually, um, I think that would be really cool because I I actually participate in co-ed. Um, uh, am- amateur sports, and I, I think it's a, a great, uh, a great. Well, game. I, I As would we like saying that, Pastor. I just got the vision in my head. I just got an image of the, the coach going, "Hey, Walker, go put on a dress. We need, we need. <laughs> just go hey. put some stockings on a dress." I, no, but the I teams would... that are successful, I will tell you, the teams that are successful in co-ed sports are the teams that work together, where you have men players, women players, because. I play against co-ed teams where it's all the guys and they're all macho and they don't pass to the women. They don't utilize their women players. 
And if a team utilizes all the talent on the team, then they destroy teams like that. And so I, I think it's awesome. <clears throat> Well, I would, I would say limit, can we limit that to soccer? Because I don't want to <laughs> see that in other, I certainly don't want to see that in contact sports. Like, I know soccer can be a contact, okay, but I'm talking about <clears throat> full contact. Primarily, uh, con yeah, primarily contact sports. It's, it wouldn't work physiologically. It wouldn't work. Now, if we're going to sure. talk about another sport, I'd like to see Sue Bird play with James Harden. Maybe he'd learn how to play the, maybe he'd learn how to play <laughs> basketball and actually pass the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of shoot from 30 feet out, which doesn't <laughs> amount to anything. Maybe he problem, could actually play defense. Problem is he makes those. But yeah, <laughs> but he could learn he could learn something about playing defense. There's no doubt. <clears throat> yeah, what, what we what what we do, okay, I gotta say, like Garrett, you know, one of my favorite memories from college playing intramural uh sports is we we, we they're one of the intramural teams was intramural football and uh um, and it was co ed. And one, I could still remember it like it was yesterday. There was this woman on the, on the other team and my buddy was throwing me a pass and she picked it off. It's like a lateral. She picked it off and both of us are like pretty fast. She's gone. I mean, we're like, oh, oh. I mean, we're like dying. To catch this guy. That was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. You know, it's fun to empower, you know, women on our team to do stuff. That's fun. But what that does though, is it lowers the, it lowers the scale of competition because if you're thinking just purely competitive, if you're thinking purely uh, physical uh, traits and abilities, th there's, there's a wide gap. There's a, there's a wide gap. Um, and I think about all these, I saw a post on Facebook by Rich on this topic, which I wholeheartedly agreed with, you know, it's, it's, you cannot ignore the physiological differences. You just can't. And, and I, I saw in a report somewhere that um, I think it was a Connecticut or somewhere where they have a bunch of dudes. Connecticut, yes. As women. And, and they've, they've dominated like out of the top 10 spots in track and field. I think eight of them are these guys. I hope eight of them at the off. high school, at the high school level. Let's clarify that for everybody. There you Chris. go. Thank you. That yes. that's, at the, that that's at the high school level. And that is, that is part of that. I'm glad you brought up that post that I made on Facebook because ultimately this comes down to you are ruining the foundation of women's sports because yes. you are ruining Title IX. You are ruining all the gains that have been made by women in sports and also in society, which were pulled along by Title IX and the historic efforts there. Even Martina Navratilova, one of the world's best tennis players, has some reservations about how this is going. I mean, well, even even Renee Richards, the first transgender athlete, has reservations about it. Wow. Thank you. Because it, it's common sense. It, it, it's not about uh, having a bent or being phobic. It's about common sense. It's about uh, some of the positions that are hard won, hard won for us females. And while I'm not a professional athlete, I am a professional sports reporter and have been for, for years. And that's been hard won as well. You know, so I, I we, we kind of have that commonality of saying, you know, we've had to fight for what we we have we had to fight for recognition fight for funding fight for uh viewers fight all of that is hard won and it's dissipating at the at the expense of political correctness if hey, we Rich, ignore history guy, um, we're doomed to repeat, to repeat if we it ignore history mm -hmm. we're doomed to repeat it rich who was the who was the defensive end um out of missouri that uh, that came out and played. He tried to play in the NFL for a minute. He went to CFL, but he, he came out as homosexual. Uh, he, he's like defensive player of the year in the SEC. First name is first name is Michael. I forget the last name because uh, he just did. He was the SEC defensive player of the year at Missouri. And, he and that's and why he we call him the encyclopedia. But hey, but hey, listen. Maybe that's the encyclopedia. Go after. Yeah, this encyclopedia. Maybe that's the model to go after. Uh, that in locker rooms, guys that uh, you know, I I'm super non-politically corrected, but anyway, guys that identify as as women, 
maybe the acceptance and making the space for them to be on a team of men, because physiologically you are a man, you're a man, but, and, and it would be an unfair advantage to you for you to go in a women's locker. No, no, you stay here, but these guys have to accept you. They have to accept you. And, and that's, and we can play as a team. To me, that makes more sense than saying, well, go play, you know, yeah, go play. Excellent point. Excellent point. I'd like to get uh, an interspecies uh, opinion here. Joshua, <laughs> as a Wookiee, <laughs> do you feel like you're left out of, uh, of American sports? The Wookiee Football League, coming <laughs> November. <laughs> A point well taken. And that's all I have to say about that. He said said there are four planets he'll be traded to. (laughs) (laughs) Wookie of the year, Joshua McMillan. I really wanted to play for Alderaan, but that dream's dead. (laughs) (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> cowboys. You, you don't just get sports hey, here we geek go. out as there well hey guys i i wanted mm-hmm. to kind of turn it to some tragedies in uh tragic stories in sports this week tiger woods uh was in a a horrifying car crash that's left him with open fractures to his lower right leg and a rod placed in his tibia, screws and pins in his foot and ankles. Uh, He says he doesn't even remember the crash. And then uh, a couple other tragic stories. A former U.S. gymnastics coach, um, you may have remembered that uh, the story that that broke a couple of years ago, 2018, John Geddert. Uh, he was charged with 24 um, charges of human trafficking charges, accusations that he abused gymnasts in his care. Um, anyway, he was criminally charged in Michigan for his ties to the disgraced former U.S. gymnastics doctor, Larry Nascar, uh, who pled guilty, by the way, to sexually abusing 10 minors in 2018. Well, the sad story is that police found Geddert's body at an interstate highway. He had committed suicide. And it's tragic to me because that was a tragic story. Uh, but the tra- the real tragedy is that it, when it, 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 coming to the end of yourself, the ugliness of what you've committed and yet not knowing that in christ you can be a new creation old things passed away all things become new you may have struggles but you have access to a living savior who can impact you and give you victory you know it's a lose lose uh his his death and it's a tragic end to a tragic story and uh one more story clemson tigers just justin foster had retired from football he said that he has ongoing problems with asthma and respiratory issues because of covid so some kind of, kind of sad stories coming out of football let's let's by all means end on a on a low note show <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what some of those stories tell us, Michelle, is that left to our own devices, we're going to go down. We're going to go downhill. We're not going to make the best choice. That's why we need a. That's why we need a savior. That's why we talk about the only savior of the world on this show, is that we cannot save ourselves. Human nature is flawed, and these are the some of these things we talked about this week are the base, biggest examples of why human nature is flawed because we're not going to make the right choice. We're not going to make the right choice. We need a heart change. Human nature is, is depraved. I hate to say that folks, but uh, that's the reality of it. And any good thing that we have (laughs) comes from above. It's it's a reminder that we have some distractions and sports is a great distraction. It's something to get excited about, cheer about and enjoy. And God is so good. You know, we're not just here as automatons. We get to live life, have life and have it more abundantly. But um, it is a reminder, Rich, you're right on that um, this life, we're living a fallen world and there is hope. There really is hope for the final victory, the final win. Anyone else want to weigh in on any of these stories? I, I I just feel like the John Getter story is so tragic, and um, we have actually a local situation. Um, Amy Carnell, who's a part of the Sounders organization, I believe she still is or was, um, but I, I'd gotten to know Amy 
when I was working with the uh, franchise and she's just an incredible human being, but she was um, abused and groomed um, by a coach and she's come out with her story. And, um, and I, I think it is the, the greatest betrayal when you are a, a coach and you're put in that position of responsibility and, and you abuse yeah. that privilege. Um, I, I just, I really, I mean, and I'm a pastor and I believe in God's redemption and forgiveness, but I will tell you, I really, really struggle with this. And, and I, I believe in, <laughs> in forgiveness and redemption. I also believe in maybe a, a swift kick in certain regions as well. <laughs> so. well, well evil exists. People. Wow. It, it, and this it, is our, and these are examples to remind us. And a nice Sapphira. And a nice Sapphira. He's, 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 uh, and, he's and most of these, right now. I yeah. mean, unless, I mean, I'm just saying, mm, 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 mm. In most of these cases, it's it's not like a single event. There's there's usually a gradual downhill slope that gets you from point A to point Z. Because I'm sure that that the gymnastics coach didn't just wake up one day and decide he was going to start molesting his athletes. Okay. So, you know, it's important when these stories come out to find out some of the things that happened before. Not so much. I mean, I mean, as far as finding justice for the victims, yes, but also it's like, okay, A, was he abused himself? B, was what, what, what other things was he in? <laughs> what was he involved in? You know, are you finding child porn on his computers? Whatever. I think for all of us, it's there, these are cautionary tales. It's like, what am I dabbling with that can lead to another step, which could lead to another step, which can lead to another step? And it, it's just a daily check on lord you know check my thoughts and my actions and and correct me now before i do something down the line that's that's hard to redeem in this world anyway josh does the white wookie with you have anything to say <laughs> his little dog his dog is on his lap uh, licking his walk. face and <laughs> a little ewok <laughs> my dog turned needed some cuddles so I <laughs> like hey don't, yeah, yeah. don't talk talk to me you have you have to stop using the beef uh, broth bouillon uh, aftershave because your dog is aftershave. Oh wow! Well, that it's last night's leftovers then. Okay. We're about to take our final shot, guys. But uh, I have really enjoyed uh, as we've grown on our our live broadcasts, um, getting comments. And uh, one comment came in that I didn't read as we were talking about what woman would make the U.S. team uh, if it weren't. Uh, men's team and a national um, and a, a female team women's team in soccer and the argument is womack not ham so yeah there i can I could, I could see that uh <laughs> Wom see that. you mean abby wombach 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 right but Wombach. here's the thing here's the thing though there is no he, abby he wombach ham, without me like a, uh -huh. oh oh a little, she's like super quick and super nimble all right. Whereas Wombach is kind of a, a a power version of it. I, I think I think I think Rich is right. I would stick with Mia. Hamm. She she is so nimble that I think I could see her surviving out there. All right. Well, uh, to our listener out there, you're welcome to share your comments. But right now, it's time for our final shot. He's gonna take your last shot. Great. Right. Right. Boom. It's time for our final shot where we go around the round table and give a shout out to something. All right. So, Josh, as you're conferring with the puppy on your lap, uh, we'll get to you in just a moment. Let's start with Actually, Garrick Payne. Think, huh? Well, of course, I am here in Italy. And so uh, last week I did give a final shot to my uh, my family here in Italy. At, but I have to do it again. Um, I'm going to uh, give my final shot. And it's it's, I think, for the First time in my Michelle live history, we're doing a video final shot to my brother-in-law, Claudio uh, Benetti. Oh, who, you were just cruel. Who, oh, who has his, man. his own Ooh. professional pizza. Wow. Oven. If you are listening to this, you've got to go to mymichellelive.com and watch this video if for no that's other an, reason piazzo, not to see our faces piazzo, piazzo. maybe to see that's, josh's puppy dog but definitely the pizza one slice for all of us 
<laughs> one slice for all of us. I'll even take the small su- <laughs> pizza. Garrick, you putting one of those in when you get home? New, yeah, spo- right. new sponsor <laughs> for mymichellelive.com. <laughs> yes. There. Claudio's, Claudio's Whoa. Pizza. Claudio's right. Pizza. That's a worthy shout out. Rich Holstrom. <clears throat> 41 years ago this week, February 22nd, 1980. The Miracle on Ice. USA. Thank you, Jim USA. Craig yes. and Mike Ruzioni. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Brent Baker. Brent R. Baker. I'm going to throw an out of region one here. Uh, I'm going to give it to Tom Izzo at Michigan State College Basketball. See, Chris, here we go. Um, they were dead and buried and looking like they were going to miss the NCAA tournament for the first time in more than 20 years. And in the last week, they have two top five wins and are all of a sudden looking like a team that you do not want to play. And you, I, I, why anyone would bury Tom Izzo's team, I don't know, but they were done and now they're not. So just so, something to keep an eye on and something to get excited about as the best part of basketball seasons on the doorstep. All right. Joshua McMillan, have you conferred with your puppy dog there to uh, give us your final shot? I did. I did. And we we had that snow. Yeah, she's (laughs) napping now. She told me what she wanted. Then she likes to take a nap afterwards. She loved playing out in the snow. We actually um, we went up to Leavenworth and played in the snow a little bit recently, too. And so she wanted me for my final shot. Can you guys see my screen over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, there you go. Yep. All right, so this is the Yakima Valley Pippins. You might notice the swag I got on my hat, too, here from when I went out and saw them. They had some fun in the snow for some of their baseball practice. Yeah, we were playing a little uh, game of handball, kind of a fun way to get our guys to take uh, to get out and try this uh, game of baseball. It's basically ultimate frisbee uh, with a tennis ball. Uh, ultimate to, uh, frisbee with a tennis uh, ball. Get one goal uh, that could be inside the square, and they're passing around trying to get uh, shots on goal and trying to hit the garbage can. Oh, check that out! Check that out. Tell me that doesn't look fun. Wow! Yeah, that's that yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fun. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm liking that. I am liking that. That's a good shout out. I like it, Josh. Yeah. So locals, I, I went out and saw them a couple years ago when I was out in Yakima for some some work stuff and got some family out there. But that's always a fun spot to be if you're in the area. Go see the Yakima Valley Pippins, and uh, you know, for our Australian listeners. Anyone have the hookup so we can get Michael Dixon on here? I'd love to to talk to a punter on this podcast. Come like on. Fun. So if you guys have that hookup, let us know. Send us an email or, or a tweet if you want to tweet me at Josh Reports Live, and uh, we'll get it figured out. Like it. All right. Uh, Chris Brown, you've been a little absent, and uh, obviously you've been saving up some of your villainry to share with us. But, man, brother, <laughs> it is so good to have you back. It is so good. I was just, oh, my heart just lit up when I saw my brother's face. Uh, bring us home, will you? That's a blessing. Thank you. It's always a blessing to be with you guys, and I'm just thankful for whenever whenever we get the time to. Listen, the shout-out today is a name that we should not know, uh, but we do because of how media is, and it is a teenager named Joseph Owens. Joseph Owens was a young man who went to Cam Newton's camp, and we've seen many viral videos from two perspectives and angles of him, uh, you know, being disrespectful, saying things he should have said, um, and and then kind of being defensive, and and Cam Newton, like, just just all over the place with it, but you know what? My shout-out is to this kid. I have two things to say. Number one, he was prompted. I don't think that he just started to attack Cam Newton for, for no reason. And, you know, this is probably a kid from coming from a single parent home. There was probably an attack from somebody. I think it's, I'm just going to say, I think it was Cam. I think it was, there was, you know, something snide said to him that hurt him. He's out there trying to make it. And, and this, this MVP says, man, y'all stink. Or some offhanded comment. And he takes it to heart. And he's like, I'm going to defend because this is all I got. I'm going to defend. I don't care who said, I'm going to defend my stuff. I, he wasn't right. He was not right. But I think people saying, oh, he's done. And writing him off. You know what he reminded me of with this mistake? Ray Lewis. Somebody's going to give this kid a chance. And we're going to be talking about him in the league one day. You watch. This kid's okay. got some talent. Just Seth Owens. Wow. Yeah, quite a story there. I, I want to give my final shout out to Josh. 
Uh, we're we're broadcasting on it. My Michelle Live podcasts are still in kind of our inf- infancy um, since the end of November. So through December, January, and now we're coming to the end of February, just three months. And it has grown exponentially. Thank you, everyone who has liked and shared. But uh, if you don't know, if you go to our website, My Michelle Live, and you click on um, About and Meet the Team, you can find out a little bit about Joshua McMillan. He got me all set up here, and it is a fine rowing machine. Um, I'll be, we'll be able to broadcast live in many places. And yes, Australia, for some reason, we're really growing there. Um, we're able to do these live streams and get instant feedback from you guys on Facebook, YouTube, and a lot of other places, uh, and including my Michelle Live. Um, so, Josh, thank you so much. He's also kind of been on call twenty four seven when I panic, and he's like, "Did you turn it on? <laughs> oh, oops, no. <laughs> plug it in, mom. <laughs> Did you plug it Have you in? Have tried turning it off and on again? Oh, Are you sure oops, it's plugged in. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. But he's been just there. And on top of it, this. Uh, next month, next month, he's going to be uh, giving, he's not going to be giving birth, but his wife is going to be giving birth uh, to... Well, something's really changed that I don't know about. Yeah, so, well, you know, it is a new world Some out kind there. kind of divine so. internet invention, I don't know, man. <laughs> Joshua McMillan, you get my shout out today, and all y'all, um, thank you for being part of our Sports Time Out broadcast, and as you're listening today... It is so much fun to have you with us. This is this has been the coolest uh, broadcasting uh, ability. You know, the My Michelle Live, all of our podcasts, but nothing compares to getting together on Fridays with my brothers. Uh, thank you. Please like this, share this, copy the link, and uh, tell people to listen. Uh, help us to grow, if you will. You can donate to keep us uh, going, and uh, you can share the God story. And if you have questions about the God story, email me. Find me at mymichellelive.com. I'll, I'll put Pastor Peng. He'll ping you. He's got, he's got the the answers there. <laughs> anyway, God bless you guys. Thanks for joining us today. For more fun, go to mymichellelive.com. That's a wrap.